it's actually like wording does matter in and and when when you're trying to trying to sort of explain things or even talk about things we have to use known sets of uh, 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 of qualifiers and so what we have today is we have um, uh, in in Plone we have a bunch of JavaScript that uses libraries to do stuff we don't I mean, I, I guess you could say jQuery is a framework, but it's kind of a library, sort of. Um, and we don't really have, it's all sort of just messy. It's kind of old style JavaScript. Um, you inline JavaScript and it's just quite bad. So what we have today, we have mockup and mockup is um, nothing more than a workflow. It's a development workflow that if you're building modern JavaScript and Plone, then really that's sort of the position to start at. Um, there's something called patterns lib, which is a library that um, uh, that that Plone, uh, Plone app widgets uses to build out some more dynamic features, uh, uh, UI elements, and the um, and so that we have uh, patterns lib and we have uh, a workflow, um, but now there is sort of the the missing part to to Plone, and I think. Uh, it's it's uh, unfortunate, but we don't have any sort of JavaScript application. Um, and by JavaScript application, I mean some uh, sort of self-contained JavaScript application, which typically would use either a library, most likely a framework, uh, which would provide an end-user feature, some sort of functionality that you could reuse across different uh, uh, different uh, installations or, or, or um, different sites. Um, is anyone use Google's custom site search? JavaScript widget. No one. Okay. How many people... Um, I'm sorry, I should have started this in the beginning. How many people are doing JavaScript development? Okay. How many people uh, are familiar with... Um, has, how many people are familiar with writing a JavaScript MVC app? Okay. Does anyone not know what I'm saying when I say a JavaScript MVC app? Please raise your hand if you don't know what I'm saying. Okay. So, um, so a, a, the, the modern JavaScript apps that are being written are sort of uh, uh, self-contained, actually like real programs that um, can be embedded on a page, the contract is usually pretty light uh, for it to work on your pay inside your application, and it provides a host of, of features. Um, in the example of something like Google Site Search, you can take some JavaScript and some you have some DOM there. You stick it all together, and you have a uh, a, a sort of uh, JavaScript implement uh, JavaScript uh, input and and search results from Google, and you can do all sorts of criteria filtering on it. And I send it to Google, and, and you can even hook and, and show the dis display the results differently. And so these applications are the things that are really where the action is happening, right? Like the action is not happening in libraries because only a JavaScript developer who is writing well, most uh, the libraries are not really where any innovation is going to be happening. Where as far as Plone is concerned, uh, and in even frameworks probably not be that because well. We're not quite good at, uh, we, we, we don't have enough Java, uh, JavaScript expertise or uh, skin in the game to actually build out frameworks. Um, but applications, things that can be reused because the Plone philosophy is that you have components and these components can be put into another Plone installation. Uh, you can uh, uh, satisfy these criteria and you get new functionality. And this is what makes Plone actually very, very, very like it's the only reason why it exists, right? It's because like people can share components and you can install components and get new features. And this is all at the Python level. But I think that um, that ultimately, um, at least in the United States, almost all development, although it still happens on server-side frameworks, almost all that's happening in JavaScript. At least that's what I can tell. And so, um, 
And so for the 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 for us to build uh, MVC JavaScript applications, I think that we have uh, a few things that have to be picked. One is we have to solve the workflow problem. Everyone has to know how to work with JavaScript inside a plone, and mockup sort solves us. But there is a part where is a little bit more contentious, <laughs> uh, and uh, and and I think that it needs to at least be thought about and people uh, discussing it. Uh, in is picking a framework, a JavaScript framework, which would provide more context and more structure for people to write JavaScript, richer JavaScript applications. You can imagine not picking a framework and then installing a bunch of components, and you have uh, Backbone, uh, Angular, Knockout, and Batman all running on one page, and it's just a huge JavaScript party, right? Um, which will happen if there is not a framework that is picked at some point. Picking something means that you have to, means that someone ultimately is unhappy because they're, you know, you're going to be deciding something that they probably don't like, but that's sort of like tough. Like it has to happen at some point. This decision that has to happen is probably with the people who are doing the JavaScript, and at some point they should make this decision, right? How it gets done, I have no idea. But it must get done, and if we don't see sort of some uh, adoption at a at least at least in the in in you know people who are wanting to build out MVC apps, and we don't see a, a an opinion around framework, I think we're failing, and I think that this is a, a, a really 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 big problem because if someone is want, wanting to write a complex JavaScript application. Um, you cannot expect them to pick a framework and do all the plone integration and think through all the different possibilities of how the framework is going to work because it is quite overbearing. So I'm, when I say a, a, a framework, really it's the direction, the structure, how to, not just the workflow, but maybe sample apps of writing a non-trivial uh, JavaScript application that's reusable uh, that you can use and provide the sort of well uh, a, a, a path for others to come and write more sophisticated JavaScript applications. So, um, uh, so I, I will show you a, a JavaScript application that that is pretty incomplete and, and the UI has gotten actually worse as time has gone on. So I apologize, um, but I think that. Um, this sort of demonstrates, at least for me, like the power of JavaScript. Is anyone here familiar with Meteor JS? Hands up. Anyone familiar with Firebase? Hands up. Okay. Wow. Okay. So let me show you um, a quick example. I think that uh, I'm going to start winding this down. Um, I'm talking a little bit fast. Um, but I want to open it up for people to ask questions because I think that the question side is, is, is very important. So what we're going to see here is an application that you can get off GitHub. Uh, Balaj and I were working together, and the idea was, uh, or is, for I have a customer that we need to provide some interactivity, um, real-time interactivity between people. Um, so the X and... Oh, wait, sorry, I'm not going to go into into that, sorry. Um, so the, the goal of this is for us to provide real-time interaction. Uh, so there is a movement right now, the cool kids, and not only the cool kids, but like the future of the web essentially boils down to WebRTC and, well, WebSockets is a few years old, but like uh, these services such as Meteor and Firebase um, are um, sort of services, you know, the implementation is WebSockets, but the services are persistent, uh, are, 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 are a, a distributed persistent system that has a JavaScript uh, 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 library, or a JavaScript interaction with your frameworks that, it's a, they're JavaScript, they're JavaScript frameworks that when you load a model, your model will update whenever someone else changes it. Um, and so I'll show you an example of this, and you guys can all hop on the website as well. And, uh, and we can sort of see how this works. So, um, and, and the reason, again, why this, sort of, this thing is being built is for, um, for people to, uh, to have a, uh, first of all, is a framework 
for us to provide asynchronous messaging uh, between people. But you have to understand the idea is that I have lots of customers. I cannot install software. Uh, I personally don't. I have two kids now, and and I don't have time to install software. I don't have in time to care about software. I have time to like help build software and deploy it, and it has to work. And I don't have. I don't want to. Uh, uh, to run anything additional that I'm not, I, I am the anti-free person where I was sort of always into Microsoft. So like, I don't care about freedom of my data. Like I already sign up for like the NSA, right? Like I'm like, okay, you know, it's happening, right? But that's my choice. You can go and do whatever you want. There's open source versions of this with Derby, all sorts of stuff. Go have at it. But the idea is quite similar, quite sane. Like it's all the same here, which is sort of re real time JavaScript. Is that what they call it? What's the, yeah? There's a buzzword or something, and we'll call it real time JavaScript. So, anyway, what it does is any other people can hop on. The, the logins are user one through user five. The password is secret. And so um, you have to understand the only thing that's integrated into this is some very, very small part of JavaScript, which is uh, uh, hooking into Firebase. We're signing uh, some tokens with Python, because uh, when we're generating the JavaScript, uh, anyway, so there's, you can go and look at Firebase and understand why it's doing it. Um, so it's user one, two, three, four, five, password secret. So all this is quite is all plone. There's nothing different about this at all. You can install this uh, this ap application, and the only difference really is that when you log in, it has a little bit of JavaScript that is initializing a framework and initializing the Firebase application, and that's it. Right? There's nothing else that's happening. Uh, and then we sort of when we initialize it, our JavaScript application, we add this com central thing. Uh, and you click on it, and it looks terrible. That's fine. Uh, so it does all these different things that don't make any much, don't make any sense because it just doesn't. But let's click on messaging, and we can see sort of like a little chat system. Uh, that should work. There we go. Um, and so the, the 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 chat system is nothing more than a, a very primitive JavaScript application, and you have. Mm. Well, anyway, I can't. I don't. I have no idea how to zoom zoom out. Anyone know on Mac how I zoom out? There we go. All right. Um, So, um, so, so, you, so, um, I'm not doing. So we have the um, uh, interactive uh, chat, right? We have no server running. Um, anytime uh, a uh, a model gets updated, uh, so I'm not going to talk about that part. I'll just say that we have oodles of functionality that we can use, and all we had to do was include a JavaScript service. That's it. Like. There was no other work that had to be done. We just had to have a JavaScript application we built, and that is it. And this can be used not only in Plone, it could be used in a PHP application or any application, a Django application, because it's almost entirely JavaScript, right? Like 99.999%, right? So in Plone, uh, we we have to have uh, uh, these sort of uh, JavaScript apps being built. Uh, we have to have a, a broader understanding of what is possible with these things, why would we do these things, and to build little tiny applications uh, that require, hopefully require almost nothing on the server side. Because um, the, 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 there are a large group of people in at least the United States where the only way that they can realistically add features to their system is pretty much install JavaScript. <laughs> like, this is like a, a large group of people. And we can do that. I mean, Plone has to change a little bit, and I think the changes are being made, but we have to write some of the apps to see how it works. 
And I think that it doesn't take very much for us to get the experience and to make some decisions and to actually have a comprehensive uh, JavaScript story. We're quite close. And I think that there's a little bit of um, uh, uh, um, uh, overlap because since it's a pure JavaScript application, that's our goal. We can probably even go as far as to work with another project uh, and maybe use the JavaScript across multiple projects, i.e. Substance D, which is a pyramid-like, kind of like plone-ish ZMI. Um, it's sort of like uh, it's 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 a it's as close to um, it's a it's a pyramid of traversable ZMI thing, and so uh, it is very possible that we could build JavaScript applications and have them run across both environments with very very small amounts of changes. And this has again, it is quite possible for us to do enormous amounts of functionality without extending Plone itself, especially if there's a decent base for us to build on. I mean, um, and this base, we're making steps with mock-up. Like, without mock-up, you couldn't do any of this, right? But my, what I'm trying to ask of everyone is to push it a little bit further, right? Like, mock-up is the, the crawling phase, right? But we need to walk or sort of at least walk faster and, 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 and walk and use uh, these uh, um, uh, MVC apps. Um, and so I think that that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about, and I should have like 10 minutes, maybe, to ask questions. To, and questions, yes? Yes. So, so that's 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 exactly right. So you can find this uh, on Balage's. Um, I think the Fire, well, Firebase Plone demo is a, a uh, it has a build out, and you can run it. And yes, it has a, a pass integration because you have to sign a token uh, with the provider. That is a integration part, right? That has to be there. We have to sign stuff. Other than that. It's um, uh, that is sort of a part of the, f the the basics that we're going to have to have to support these applications, um, and so that already exists, right? Like this application, like exists, right? Like yes, it's quite like primitive because of what it's doing, um, but uh, you know, um, you know, if you are logged in as user three. If someone logs in as user three or, or not, actually, if you look at your broadcast and I send a broadcast, it immediately updates. Right? And that two, when you saw the two show up, right? Like that two is after it's been set on the server. Right? Like that two isn't like being updated inside of the JavaScript code. That is, we get that number automatically. And actually, so we've saved information to the remote server. The remote server has rebroadcast all model changes out. And so if you're looking at this on the server and you see that number change, which is almost instantaneous, like I get that for, you get that for free. You don't have to do any JavaScript work, nothing. And there's all sorts of JavaScript like libraries and frameworks and applic well, there, these are frameworks and libraries that you can hook into to provide this stuff, right? It's like free, you know? I mean, it's, you do no work, right? Absolutely, you have to do nothing. You don't have to store anything, you don't have to change any schemas, nothing, and you get it for free. Yes? Um, so this does not. I, so this is using a service called Firebase. I'm sorry, I wasn't probably clear about that. This uses Firebase, and I don't want to run Node. You can. I don't want to run anything. I don't. I if if anyone wants to talk about WebSockets, you are a a a a bolder man than I to implement 
a asynchronous WebSocket server that provides all the rich feature set that you would have to have to have something quite robust. It's, it's, it, is, it is not impossible. All of the tooling is there, but there are services now that like you get it for free and these guys are like totally kicking ass. I mean, they're like really knocking stuff out in the States. And Firebase, I think, is like, if you don't do anything from this, if you get nothing from this conversation, if I'm just sort of talking just nonsense, at least go to Firebase.com and Meteor and look at these technologies. These are quite, quite, quite interesting. And I think that um, we can bring these kinds of things into Plone. And I, I would hope that people would talk to the JavaScript team, sprint, work with some of the JavaScript guys. And we don't need to write app. We don't. We, we just need to write more JavaScript to get sort of the understanding of how, what, you know, how is it working? How you know, using the workflows? Like, does it, you know, how, how can we make the development process easier? And the sprints are the best time because the pain that you feel in the beginning it's lost by the person who's already. But Rock, he doesn't know what pain is, right? He's like a, one big walking callus, right? <laughs> I mean, he just like, doesn't have any pain anymore, right? But like you, when you actually like touch this stuff and it hurts, like that is like that data point has to at least be like it should be shared, right, with the the JavaScript guys. And some pain, you know, learning is painful. Uh, so I mean, there's that, right? But there's there's unnecessary pain as well. Yeah, Dylan. You can promote anything, Rock. But you have to talk loudly. Yeah, so sprinting on JavaScript will start with a short introduction. So if anybody wants to learn JavaScript, how to use mockup. Uh, in Clone or any other project, uh, welcome. We'll have an hour uh, uh, of introduction session. session. So, yeah. And again, does anyone, so raise your hand if you do not know what mockup is. So mockup is, in reality, I don't care what Rock says, nothing more than how to use a bunch of tools that JavaScript people are using. That's it. But of course, they have some name for it, right? It should just be called how to use JavaScript with Plone. But that's a lot of words. Yes? Right. That's true. That's true. I'm I am short selling it by saying it's how to use the. It's it is more than that for sure. It's the implementation. It's the a lot of JavaScript implementation for for Plone widgets, but really, it's there's no other place for you to go and say how am I going to use the JavaScript tool chain? What what tool chain do I use? How do I work with JavaScript? Mockup is pretty much the 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 entry point for you to to learn how to use it. And I'm pretty sure as any Python developer, um, it's quite actually good for everyone to talk about this because. Whether whatever technology you're using, if you're doing web stuff, JavaScript is basically like that's a reality, and you're going to be using it. And actually, it's pretty damn cool. I mean, at least the Firebase stuff is like mind-blowingly cool. Anyone else? Please ask questions. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I have Rock and Steve. They know way more than I do, and if I don't answer it or if I answer it incorrectly, they can. They'll be more than happy to to shut me down. Or Rob, or anyone else. Everyone knows more than me. Any other questions about like real time JavaScript or JavaScript applications? Or, yes, Eric. The question is when do we write a MVC application with, for Plone? When do we start? So you can talk with Rock about that. Rock, you want to explain when do we do that? So, well, there are a few problems. Before picking, we have to solve quite some stuff. We have to get uh, widgets working before we can move forward. Uh, but some work has already been uh, done in this area. We actually have our first application inside the mockup. You can actually show the video. Um, 
I don't want to. You give me a URL and someone paste a URL into the chat window. I'll go to it. Yes. So, and again, like, so someone's going to have their feelings hurt. That's fine, right? But like, really, ultimately, it's JavaScript, right? And like, I'm qu quite opinionated because I just, I'm American, maybe, or I don't know what it is. But like, you know, if you want to look at this, the everything we have, you can follow this uh, example. Actually, use the, the the more recent one. It's called uh, Firebase Communicator. And there's a large install, like you run build out, you set a few environment variables. It's, we made it as simple as possible for you to get started to have this running. And there it is, installation, build out example, set up, take your URL, you go to Firebase, blah, 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 blah. Um, how do you use it? Here's how you do the development. You know, it's describe some of the, it, I mean, this is, this is at least a starting place if you want to see something immediately. But I think that the mock-up stuff, you know, what Rock is talking about as well is another one. But we have to at least use it and make, make something. Like, pick a very small application. Maybe it's showing the number of commits on GitHub for a given repository, right? For all the things inside the control panel or whatever it is, right? Just something very, very, very small. You write it, and that's it, right? Because we have to have more experience, people writing it, and figuring out what the problems are. So, so the the reason is I don't want to run anything, period. And also fire Firebase, but you know, Firebase and Couch. Come on, there's not really much of a there's not really there's a huge difference, huge difference. Like I'm incredibly lazy, and this really is supposed to be a technical preview. The idea is that you should be able to look at this code. Okay, so Firebase. So there's two pieces to this. I didn't explain this. I'm sorry because I presume you'd go and look at it. We have Angular, which is a framework, right? I am incredibly opinionated that I think Angular is a good framework. Uh, but we have to have a framework because like anything else would not pr provide any sort of precedence for anyone else to come in and look at the software and copy it and use it in other ways. If we're just using our own qu code, like just directly using Firebase with Plone, like, it wouldn't be very much use for anyone else to reproduce, right? We're trying to provide some structure. That's the, the goal. Firebase is the thing that when I change a model or change something inside the DOM, that it automatically reflects in everyone else who's connected and has that model loaded, right? So, I, I, there, Derby, is it Derby? That has, it's a Java, it's open source, right? Isn't Derby? It does, it's like a Firebase thing, right? Um, there is oodles, there's never like an ending, there's, there's tons of these things, right? You, you, can have, you can have Elasticsearch hosted, running with JavaScript within no more than two minutes, right? Yes, it takes five minutes to run, uh, to download Elasticsearch and run it, but there is a substantial amount of comfort, like not, if you have network connectivity in the United States, we have lots of network connectivity, so it's not a big f problem for us. But there is a enormous amount of comfort when you're trying to share with other people to get something to work. Here, here's the 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 point of reference, right? It's there's a service that we're going to be using. You go there, you sign up, it's free. You get a URL, you paste it into here, you run this command, and blah, you have something that works. Yes. Oh, thank you guys. Please talk to me. 